First of all, let me say that uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and I'm very pleased that there is an interest in uh, Pune. So I am someone with three hats on my head. Um, I am a philosopher by training and by profession. I am an administrator. I have been the director of um, offices of the German Academic Exchange Service for North America in New York and for South Asia. In New Delhi, and thirdly, I am a political animal. I work uh, in various ways with uh, various political parties, both in Germany and in France. And uh, I'm here in Pune right now in order to give a number of lectures, do workshops and conferences on Albert Camus, the uh, Nobel Prize winner for literature in 1957, whose 50th anniversary of his death is in this year, and so for this reason there's a tremendous activity all over the world, uh, and I am the Secretary General of a Camus Study Society in southern France. Well, uh, the perspective on the world in 2010 is perhaps uh, particularly complicated because we are experiencing at the moment, uh, I make it simple, I'll say three phenomena that uh, whose trajectory into the future we are as yet unable to predict. The first and perhaps the most important of course is whether uh, if we wanted to do an interview like this again in 2050, we are, do not know at the moment whether we would still be around. That has a number of reasons, um, and uh, there have been previous times when the end of the world has been predicted to be near, but uh, we are perhaps reaching a point now where we do not need um, prophets or the Nostradamuses of this world, but uh, where we have a kind of a scientific scenario uh, that helps us to, uh, uh, to gauge the limits of the resources that make life on this planet livable. So that's the first thing that I, that I think uh, marks uh, the situation right now. Secondly, <clears throat> we are experiencing the phenomenon of globalization, which is not entirely new, it's been with us for a while, and many people have been thinking that it is a positive phenomenon, but particularly the emerging countries such as India, China, Brazil, etc., would greatly profit from this process of globalization, but uh, uh, we had to experience, <coughs> particularly in the Western industrialized countries, but that always trickles down, you know, very fast uh, to other countries that, uh, concomitant with uh, the process of globalization, we have a very serious financial crash. We experienced last year a crash um, uh, at least as important, if not more so, than the crash in 1929, which was the first shock uh, for uh, for capitalism that uh, and you know that almost uh, caused the prediction of its demise. This time, um, we saw that um, if you leave the markets to themselves, that leads to tremendous disaster billions of uh, dollars and euros and other currencies were burnt by a bunch of gangsters uh, at the head of financial institutions, among them Wall Street, um, because the markets derailed and the profit and the motivation behind the derailment of the markets was greed, sheer 
greed. It was not just profit making, which is normal in a capitalist society, but it was sheer greed. And um, that we have as yet uh, to find uh, the, uh, the antidote against uh, this kind of a, of a virus. Uh, and we haven't found it yet. And we, we're seeing currently, after several months of shock, you know, in which the losses were socialized and the profits were privatized, we see a uh, recurrence of the same scenario because the boni uh, to the bankers are revived, you know, that is to say it appears that the financial uh, environment uh, the, uh, has not really learned anything from uh, the crash that, that occurred uh, last year. So I'm saying that the development of globalization, the development of the financial markets um, with the uh, an added acceleration uh, to the transactions that are going on uh, is another unpredictable or leads to another unpredictable moment in so far as the immediate future is concerned. And of course there is a, uh, there is a third phenomenon that makes the predictability of uh, the future and therefore even the describability of the present complicated and that Germans are always thinking threes, it's because of Hegel. Um, there's a third phenomenon which makes the predictability even the describability of the current situation complicated and that is the shift we're currently experiencing in the superpower structure in the world. The uh, 20th century was clearly the century of the United States I believe that the 21st century is no longer going to be the century of the United States and it is not as yet going to be the century of the European Union. It is going to be the century of India and China. And, um, However, when one has said that, uh, this is not only a function of the, um, of the population, in those two countries, it is a function also of their fastly becoming uh, industrialized countries, no longer only emerging countries, um, like we have uh, had been the habit of calling them for 10 years. Uh, it is also because these two countries happen to be sitting on the, the one natural resource that is going to be most important in the coming decades, and that is water. Uh, they're sitting on the Himalayas, and that's where the water is. And the next wars that are going to be fought, and unfortunately I think there will be such wars, will be fought over water and not over oil anymore. And that leads to two imaginable scenarios. And we do not as know yet uh, in the, uh, in, at least in Europe or in the remaining Western world, which of the two scenarios we should fear most. First, the first scenario is that India and China get along. That is awesome, you know, that is um, fearsome enough because that would mean that more than one third of the world population, they go together, would form a block, uh, an economic, political block uh, that it would be extremely hard to do anything against. One can be for them, one can be with them, one can uh, jump on the bandwagon or anything like that, but it would be very hard uh, to do anything against. No? So the uh, world domination that has in the past been uh, largely uh, engineered by the United States and its allies and its many military uh, <coughs> uh, positions in the world, that will shift and it will definitely shift to Beijing and to New Delhi.